the axis slider. The Axis Series by Zevin. This is a complete multi-axis motorized slider system. It features a centralized control unit which houses the linear motor as well as the pan-axis motor. That pan-axis motor has a quick release slide in it for the pond's tilt arm. And when you combine all three together, you get precise three-axis control of your camera. That centralized control unit also has a handful of buttons, a dial, and an LCD screen on it. So that way you can interface with the slider without the need for an app. All of this is setting on a quality set of carbon fiber rails, which actually makes this feasible to get on set and get it up quickly. Let's break this down and start from the beginning. When you open the box of your Axis Slider Kit, you're gonna find a custom carry case to help simplify transport to and from set. Then you'll get to the carbon rails in the length of your choice. Now I've got the Axis 120 here, which means this is 120 centimeters long, or roughly four feet in length. They do also have options available in 80 and 100 centimeter variants as well. On the ends, you're gonna find four built-in adjustable feet for use on a flat surface. And then throughout, they have mounting plates with various thread hole sizes for attaching this to a tripod or stands like you see here. And finally, on the rail itself, you're gonna find scale markings for repeated movements or trying to recreate a shot. Sitting on top of the rails, you're gonna find what is ultimately the brain of this whole operation, and that is that central control unit. Like we said earlier, this houses the linear and pan-axis motors all kind of in one here. On the front, we have that LCD screen as well as the buttons and the dial for manually interfacing with this. Moving around to the top, you've got the pan axis up here, which houses the quarter 20 and 3 8 nested screws, as well as a slot for the pond's tilt arm. Surrounding that pan axis is 360 degrees worth of scale markings, similar to the ones we found on the rail itself, as well as a bubble level. Now moving on to your left, my right, the only thing we have over here is a lock button for the pan axis, which is useful for when we want to screw a fluid head onto the top of this. Bringing ourselves to the rear, we find our first powering option for the central control unit, and that is a single NPF battery slot. Below that, we have another locking mechanism. This is a friction lock, keeping the unit in place on the rail so it doesn't slide around in transport, or if you want a locked off steady shot while on the slider. Moving over to the left, your right side, underneath this port cover, you're gonna find our second powering option, that is via USB-C. Doesn't take much to keep this operational, five volts, three amps, Many of your standard power banks or, or wall chargers are gonna be able to supply that, as well as our remote end port here underneath this cover. Included in your kit, you're gonna find two adjustable support rods for stabilizing the outermost ends of your slider in any number of positions you can think to rig this in. On one end, you're gonna find an adjustable quarter 20 thread for securing and threading into one of the mounting plates. And on the opposite end, you're gonna find an adjustable C-clamp for attaching back to the tripod base or whatever you can think to use to stabilize the extreme ends of your slider. The Axis Pro kits are gonna include the Pond's tilt arm, which gives you that third axis of motion control. It's gonna be powered in the same way as the central control unit with an NPF battery on top, or alternatively, you could use a USB-C input, five volt, three amp power to the tilt arm as well. The tilt arm is gonna provide for two layers of adjustment, up and down, as well as fore and aft to keep your camera centered and balanced. Once we do get power to the unit, there's just three buttons to operate it. The very bottom one is the power button to get it turned on. And then above that, you're gonna find an up and down rocker switch. This lets you adjust the position and waypoints. And once this unit is turned on, that power button doubles as another function button. It allows you to adjust the speed with which it travels or set A and B waypoints. Your kit will also come with a handful of other miscellaneous accessories, most notably a spare belt, as well as a unit specific screwdriver and wrench, instruction manual, and warranty card. All right, welcome to your Zeppelin Axis quick start tutorial. It's about time we got this thing up and running and put it to good use. The first thing you wanna do when using your Zeppelin Axis is to make sure you have a good stable foundation and there's plenty of ways to do so. Right now I'm utilizing the adjustable built-in feet on a flat surface like so. Your other options would be to mount this to a tripod using a mounting plate on the bottom with a tripod plate, as well as the included support rods. You could support this with C-stands, you could rig it under slung on an angle, vertical. You've got countless options for getting this supported. And this really does have a good payload capacity, which means we can use some of our larger camera rigs on it 
just don't cut any corners on getting this properly supported. Now that we have our rails supported, it's time to get a head attached to the top of our unit. If you already have a Pons tilt arm or if you bought a Pro Kit, you'll get this included. The pan axis receiver up here has a built-in slot for the Pons tilt arm, so make sure this thumb screw is threaded to the rear, slot that in place, and tighten it down. Okay, let's get this thing up and running. I'm gonna use the NPF battery slot on the rear. You could also use the USB-C slot as well. I prefer not to have cables, so I'm gonna go with the NPF battery slot for the central control unit, and then again for the Pons tilt head as well. On the front of the unit, you're gonna find power buttons for both the central control unit and the tilt head. It takes just a couple of seconds here to get turned on. One of the things that I appreciate so much about this system is I'm not forced to use an app or a phone if I don't want to, and that's my preferred method. So once I get these units powered on, the first thing I'm gonna do is connect or pair the tilt head to the central control unit. I'm gonna do that by dropping into the menu system, and I'm going to scroll down to add device. I'll select the appropriate device, give them a minute to get paired, and you'll notice you have a successful connection when you see a green dot next to the selected device. Now the two are talking to each other and you're ready to rock. Back in the home screen now, operation of this is about as intuitive as it gets. On the left-hand side, you've got four directional arrows. The up and down arrows operate the pan axis, whereas the left and right arrows operate the linear axis motor. On the right-hand side, you've got four more buttons. You have an A and B button, as well as a button with a loop indicator and one with a hand indicator for making handheld adjustments when it comes to setting your A and B points. Below the screen, you have a start and stop button, and then you also have a button for the menu system. So let's go ahead and set our first A and B points here. I'm gonna have this central position set as my A point, so I'm gonna do that by pressing the A button. You'll hear a little beep tone indicating that is your A point. And then I'm going to navigate this to a new position and just give it a couple different parameters on every one of the different axes. And I'm going to set that as my B point. Again, we hear a tone indicating that is now our B point. Both the A and the B point are highlighted and there's an arrow pointing from B to A. If you were to press play right now, it's gonna just move from B and stop at A. If we press that loop indicator, now we can see that that has changed to a loop and you guessed it, if we press play, this is gonna loop between our A and B points. Great for talking head interviews for our B cam. Should we need to delete our A and B points, we can dive into our menu system and our first option there is for delete A and B. We can do it just like so and get ourselves back to our main screen where we can get ourselves reset. So I'll demonstrate for you now what happens when you press this handheld button over here. This is going to detach the motor from our belt like I mentioned earlier. And in doing so, I can now position this camera by hand and get it right where I want it to be. Set an A point, bring it over, set a B point, and loop these two together. There you have it. So that's a real personal preference thing. I find myself often using the directional arrows more than I have been using it handheld, but to each their own, you've got the option. You can pull off a lot of the things that you're gonna to need to use a slider for just using the built-in control interface within the system itself. But if you find yourself rigging this in a place where you can't get to it, or maybe you wanna be a little more intricate with some of the movements that you wanna do and have a little bit more precise control over all the different movements, that's where the app comes in. Once you have the most recent version of the Zeppelin Lab app downloaded, go ahead and open it up, and you're gonna find that the app automatically begins to find any available powered on slider components to connect to. Click into a rail slider, you're gonna see the access slider option pop up and you know you have a good connection once you see the green light indicated in the top right. We're gonna back out. I have a Pons tilt head as well, so let's connect the head and doing so the same way as the slider base itself. We've got a good connection. Once we've connected everything that we have powered on and wanna to connect to, we can press done. You'll find a very simple interface, which is great. Starting from the bottom, you've got two virtual joysticks. The left joystick gives you control of the pan axis of movements, as well as the tilt axis. The right joystick lets you control the linear motor. Just above that, you're gonna find a slider for precise adjustments of your speed, anywhere from 1% up to 100%. And then above that are your different waypoints. You're gonna see waypoints A through F, which gives you a little bit more precise control over the movement than you would have gotten just using the physical dials on the back of the slider itself. Let's get a few waypoints set up. I'm gonna set this as my A waypoint, so I'll tap A there. 
I'm gonna move this to another position on the rail. Go more towards the center. I don't know, let's give ourselves something ridiculous here. We'll call that good. We'll set that as our B point. And then because we've got the option, I'm gonna give ourselves a C point as well. Go back somewhere over here. That'll be C. On the very bottom of the app, you're gonna find your loop indicator as well as your play and pause button. I'll go ahead and get that started and let this uh, run through its paces here. And it'll just cycle back and forth between A, B, and C, and then C, B, back to A. You can do that for as many waypoints as you need. That's the basics of the app for you. So that's how it works, which leaves us with just one question. How well does it work? So put together the following scene. All the movements you're gonna see are done exclusively with the axis slider. You can decide for yourself. Roll camera. And that's gonna do it. Thank you for checking out the video and hanging out today. My name's Troy Maris. I am pumped to have had you here. You can find me down in the comments below. Happy shooting out there. God bless. See you in the next vid.